I would say, you know, a hive, a strong colony that's three deep um, should have 150 to 200 pounds of honey in it going into winter. Um, and that's like, you know, the top two boxes being mostly honey with a little bit of brood space and even some honey down in, in the bottom. Um, that's not always the case. Sometimes it's like the brood nest is almost empty in the bottom, has a little bit of honey in the second super, and then the top has a lot. That's pretty normal, but the more honey that they have, it's like having more insulation um, and more energy to generate heat as well. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll talk about insulating for winter. I grew up working for a commercial beekeeper who overwintered pretty much, well at first, 100% of his hives every year. Um, after a few years he started sending, you know, about a third of them to California, but still overwintering two-thirds of his outfit. Um, so that's like six, seven to eight hundred hives a year that he's overwintering. So he goes around, they're all on bottom boards, so in his overwintered yards, he's got four rows of um, hives spaced out, right? And there's usually six or seven in a row, um, 24 to 25 hives a yard. Um, he puts them into two rows, one facing east or west or whatever, kind of opposite direction. And then back to back, he makes two um, rows where the hives are sitting side by side next to each other since he's got commercial flat lids um, he can actually there's no overhang on the side he can actually butt up each hive right next to another one so he makes two rows um, facing opposite directions with the backs touching with the lids and there's a little air gap running between those because of the cleats on the end of the lid um, I'll kind of demonstrate that but anyway so it's a nice flat um, solid top with all the lids touching, right? So he goes and he takes one and a half, two straw bales, fluffs up all the straw along all the tops of the lids so it's like, you know, six, seven, eight inches of loose, fluffy straw. Then he takes tar paper, usually two long, wide sheets, and unrolls it over that straw. And then he takes a big piece of chicken wire, unrolls that over that, and then takes nails and a hammer and hammers in nails into the chicken wire to stretch it down and pull it tight. And he actually hammers right into the sides of the um, bee boxes, right on the ends where the joints are. So it stretches the chicken wire and kind of sucks in the tar, tar paper so it curls around the uh, edge of the pack, but yet is, you know, rounded and domed in the middle. So snow or water can run off the hives, keeps the hives pretty dry, plus keeps all that straw dry. And then the chicken wire kind of holds everything together. Um, he's had really good success with that. Um, you know, the hives kind of generate heat, so being side by side, they can kind of share heat a little bit. Also protects them from the wind and then uh, and uh, can, uh, you know, overwinter all of his bees like that for fairly cheap. Um, doesn't really cost a lot in straw. He reuses the tar paper and the chicken wire every year. Um, it's, a, it's a lot, uh, it's a lot more old school than what people use nowadays for backyard beekeeping where they've got, you know, individual little kits to wrap each hive individually and just leave it where it sits. It's also a lot more work than just loading them up with a forklift and sending them to California where they don't have to be insulated for the winter. Um, I suggest that people give some kind of protection uh, for bees overwintered in Montana, at least from the top, if not from the top and three of the sides. And I'll kind of go over up there where I think, you know, getting away with insulating for the winter can be done fairly eas easily and cheap um, for, you know, the backyard um, beekeeper. Uh, that being said, people have different philosophies. Some people don't um, insulate them at all. Um, I really feel like the wind and the moisture um, 
are the big problems compared to the temperatures. Um, a strong colony is going to uh, produce enough heat on their own with enough honey they should be able to generate heat throughout the five or six month winter and uh, be pretty much fine. You had a question? So that's just the top, you don't try to insulate the sides? Um, well, and uh, you're talking about how the other beekeeper does it with the big packs? Yeah, with the yeah. well, and the straw and the side by side, they're insulated by yeah, the hive that's next to them, except for the ones that are on the end. And there's only four on the end because there's two rows. Right. Um, so those four on the end, I'll put maybe a straw bale or two next to them just so they're protected from the um, wind. The front, side of the, hives, the front side of the hives, he leaves open. And I feel it's important that you do leave a side open, generally the side facing the sun. You can get that warmth in this winter months. And then also you want to be able to let the hive breathe. You want good air circulation and the bees um, being in charge of how much airflow the hive gets, not the beekeeper. Okay. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll show you um, up there when we kind of go through the bees. Um, you know, a bee hut is going to let uh, sun come through in the winter and uh, uh, help warm the hive. It should keep most of the snow or rain off the hive. Um, unless you put boards or, or something up on the sides, it might not prevent the wind from coming through and robbing all the, all the energy. Um, but it could be a useful tool in overwintering where it's keeping um, the hive pretty dry and that's that's a big deal and depending on where you live you know your overwintering needs are going to vary if you live on the coast it's going to be different than inland and then north versus south and um, stuff like that so for this climate we do have fairly mild winters in the western half of Montana. When you start getting over to the um, central and eastern Montana, they get a lot more of the Arctic uh, fronts uh, coming in. So Montana is kind of like two different climates um, when talking about overwintering. A lot of people do not overwinter on the east side of the state just because they do have the wind and the chilling cold and um, there's not many um, small-scale beekeepers left. Most of them sent them to California. Um, over here we can get some of that nice mild west coast winter, um, you know, where there's actually rains and it's actually nicer and we don't get the, you know, long-lasting sub-arctic, you know, 20, 30 below. So it's kind of a fine line we play over here because you could get that and you could not get that. I heard a lot of people losing their hives and I don't know if it's because they had those individually wrapped black tar paper kits that they recommend for northern climates because you put a black box over a hive and it gets 70 degrees in the middle of winter and there's no ventilation for the bees. I could see that becoming a problem really quick. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, the straw thing definitely encourages mice um, and mice like to get into the hive and eat whatever they can if the hive will let them um, and that happens in the winter. Um, so that's one thing to be wary of. You could use mouse proof uh, guard, guards on your entrances for your hive and that might help but um, mice seem to chew their way through any woodenware that stands in their way of happy, you know, happy home full of honey and food and warmth. Um, but yeah, so that's one thing to think about. And then, you know, I don't really like using a hammer and nails and nailing uh, random holes into my nice bee equipment. So when I'm using chicken wire and tar paper or something like that, um, I'll just weigh it down with extra straw bales and spend the extra money on straw bales and then, um, you know, do something else to kind of stretch the chicken wire over the top to hold.